Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel where today we'll be doing another video around Love Your Licensing. What I will be covering today with you is change management. So we are going to look at specifically where change sits within ITSM. And on the screen you can see a list of the ITSM standard capabilities and exactly what is included within the change module. Now, before we get into a demonstration, I just thought it'd be good to walk through the benefits of change management. Now, change management supports the three types of service changes that ITIL describes, these being standard, emergency and normal changes. The change type determines which state model is invoked and the change process that must be followed with it. Now, change plays a crucial role in, in increasing change velocity by ensuring smooth transitions and minimizing disruptions. ServiceNow aligns seamlessly with DevOps and SRE practices. Now, this integration streamlines the change process, enhances collaboration, and improves overall IT service delivery as well. Change management is a catalyst for proficiency and accuracy. So you can use the change success score to evaluate the probability of success. Now, before our demonstration, I'm just going to outline the personas and the different things that we'll be looking at within the demonstration. So first of all, we'll be focusing on initiating a change. Now for this, I'll be using Laxmi, who's one of our service desk agents. She'll be operating within the service operations workspace to initiate a change request off an incident and then we'll go through how she goes through the different steps within the change. Then at phase two, we'll be looking at Caleb, who's a change approver. And for this, we'll be looking at our change premium dashboard, giving an overview of the performance analytics and what he can see on his side. So let's get into the demonstration. So today in our demonstration, we're going to be looking at a very out of the box process for the change management side of things. So today I've got an incident. I am obviously impersonating Laxmi, who is one of our service desk agents. Now from this particular incident, on our details tab, we can gather some information from the caller, we can see what's going on, um, but we, particularly what is interesting to Laxmi is the impact of this on the service and the configuration item as well. A problem has already been raised off the back of this incident because we can see from utilizing agent assist within our workspace that there seems to be a couple of similar open incidents that are coming through. So Laxmi has decided to go ahead and create a change request, which we can do all from the service operations workspace. So Laxmi doesn't have to click between different tabs or enter different windows. Instead, she can do it all off the back of this particular incident. On this slide, you'll be able to see that there are different templates that have been created for change requests. Now, obviously, following normal ITIL practices, we're just going to go ahead and use a normal template. And when Laxmi does this, it will open up reflecting that template on what she needs to do for this particular change request. So here in the summary, we'll have the short description. Laxmi can enter a longer description and the justification for this change request. But we're going to go ahead and assign it to her. Now, by following this normal change process, the IT team can ensure that the change is properly planned, risks are assessed, and necessary approvals are obtained before implementing the upgrade. And what this will do is essentially help to minimize disruptions to both the user, but also maintain that overall system availability as well. Now, very similarly to what we saw in the incident, we have a details tab again for this change request. We can see everything is reflecting to the incident that we've raised it off the back of. So we can see that configuration item. We can see the risk at the moment, the impact, and obviously the state of this change. But as we work down, we can see if there's anything else like the assignment group we need to associate. So here, I'm just going to simply put the service desk. And then we've also got the planning side of the change. So the justification, the implementation plan, test plan, etc. All of that information can be filled in here. But if we go back to that overview, what I want to focus on is we do have an out of the box workflow for change requests. Now, what this does is it provides different stages for the change requests. So here we can see we're starting off in the new 
and we will go all the way through to it being closed and then if it is to be cancelled as well. So the first thing Laxmi is going to do is have a look at the scope and the impact. So we can see that there is one affected configuration item. If there was anything else being reflected or flagged here, then she'd be able to access it. But more importantly, she's able to go and set the schedule for when this change will take place. Now this opens in another tab. So the agent needs to set the date and time for the change request, but it means that Laxmi is still close to the incident if she needs to refer back or that change request, any information is very easily accessible from the service operations workspace. So for the schedule, we're going to open that schedule window and we can, for example, select our plan start date as Monday the 16th and we'll keep that time the same. And then we can say that it will finish on the 16th at 05 hours. And once we try and see that reflected on the schedule, it's going to alert me if there are any blackout windows or if there's any conflicts that we need to avoid. So for example, it said that our next conflict free date is here with this specific time. So I can go ahead and accept that if that works. So once I have done that, we can see that it is all reflected within our schedule. Now, if we return back to our details where we're going through that workflow for the change, we can see that there's no conflicts detected for this particular time. And moving on, we can then go on to our risk evaluation. So the risk is calculated on the back of the scope and impact and scheduling of the change as well. However, you can go ahead and create a risk assessment, which I have done so for these particular types of changes, for our normal changes. And this is essentially like some kind of survey where you need to fill in critical information around this change. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the answers to these questions. Of course, this is all configurable to whatever you want to have on your particular risk assessment. But once we submit that, it will then calculate towards the risk of this particular change. Laxmi thing can then go ahead and add any change tasks for the user who will be actually working on the change. And we do actually have templates that can be used for these change tasks. So whether it's a planning, implementation, testing or review change task, you'll go ahead and create those here. However, what I'll do is just simply save this change. And what we'll need to do next is approve it so that essentially the change can happen. Now, I'm going to quickly switch over to our second persona, which was Caleb, who is our change manager, and show you one of the dashboards that he can use to be able to identify any changes that have been created and where he can go ahead and approve these. So I have created a change premium dashboard, and this is essentially different widgets that are telling me which changes have been opened today, those unassigned changes, overdue changes, obviously a very high amount. This is our demo data, so it's <laughs> extremely high, but this will just give Caleb that overall summary of what's going on with all the different changes. I've also added in some dashboards as well, so we, we can see the changes that have been open per month, per type, but also those that have been closed. So if I have a look at the changes open today, we can see that particular change that Laxmi has raised. Now, this is essentially looking at the back end view of the change. So we've been looking at everything within the service operations workspace. Now, in the back end, in the traditional list view as such we call it, it's the very similar view. We've still got the workflow. The aim here is for Caleb to approve the change that Laxmi has pulled through. So to do this, he can scroll down and we can see that there are a list of approvers. Now, because he holds the idle user, I'm just gonna go ahead, open this record and approve it so that Laxmi can go ahead and get started with the next process in the change request. Now, of course, you can set this so that it automatically goes ahead and approves, or you can have it so that your cab approvers go ahead, um, open up the record and approve the change request however it works for your business. Now, once we've, we've approved it on this side, we can see that we've now pushed it through ready to the scheduled stage. And if I flip back to Laxmi, our service desk, we can see that it's also reflected here within her workflow in the service operations workspace. So I'm just gonna go ahead, save and refresh this. 
And for the sake of the demo, we're going to execute the jump so that we're essentially moving this change and pretending that it's happened. As soon as the system has responded to my jump, we'll be able to see that we have now progressed through to the different stages. Now that we are within the implement stage, um, we can imagine that the change has happened. We've got the change task that may have been created re relating to this particular change crest, but also we can see any additional comments um, that have been left by users of this change. Now, when we go ahead to the review stage, this is where we start to add our post implementation notes and just make sure that we're leaving a summary of what happened with this change. We can see that the incidents have been fixed, if there's any problems fixed or outages, but here we can now see a whole log of this particular record. This now can be closed down, so I can go into the details section as lacks me. We can close the information, so we've said it's successful, the change was completed successfully, and then go ahead and simply close this down to reflect. And that is how simple it is following the out-of-the-box process within ServiceNow. Now, returning back to Caleb, our change manager, I just wanted to show you a bit more about that dashboard we were looking at, the change premium dashboard. Now, I went ahead and went straight into our overview tab where we were able to access the change. However, if we actually have a look at different data, we can start to look at our performance analytics around change. So for this particular tab I created, we've got the processes that are happening by state. So for example, the average age of the changes, the average reassignments and the average age that they're open. We also have the process by age. So we've got the process by states, but also the process by age, seeing how old they are, etc. And this is utilizing our performance analytics. So if I'm to open up this particular widget, it's going to give me a much more granular view. Now, for our performance analytics, this differs from reporting because it's looking at a trend over time. So instead of a snapshot, we're actually looking at trending data. So Caleb can come in here and actually see what's going on in an hourly basis or a daily basis. Now, he can configure this particular dashboard so he can use a custom view, he can use a seven day view, however he wants to view the data, but he can see exactly what's going on within this time period. He also has some additional options, whether he wants to see that trend of data or perhaps the forecast of what's happening next. And this all helps with continual improvement as you can raise continual improvement initiatives off the back of our performance analytics. So hopefully this has given you an overview of our change, our out of the box flow, the dashboards that can be used. Obviously, we've seen the overview of the change premium earlier, but just to show you how simple it is um, to use change management within ServiceNow today. Thank you for watching.